When I was 13, I, I didn't really know anything about this uh, issue called climate change. Um, it was just uh, some sort of thing that people told me was kind of important, maybe, and, and uh, it seemed to be something that uh, my parents or the news would tell me is, is uh, important for the future of my generation. I didn't really know what it was. Um, but then I, then I met a man uh, called Robert Swan, who together we decided to do a North Pole expedition. Uh, and with these North Pole expeditions, I was doing a campaign to try to engage people uh, like you and people at the time who were my age uh, in a better understanding of, of issues around climate change. And, and what we wanted to do, we decided to try to do the first ever live streaming video from an Antarctic expedition. When we got to the Ross Ice Shelf, though, um, we were in, this is what it looked like. This is what the edge of Antarctica looks like. Um, we, we passed the mountains. We are now on uh, ice that's suspended over the sea. And we had to get ready to start the journey south um, on foot. That was just uh, the beginning, of course, was, was, the, was the truck journey. And so this is where Doug and I would separate from uh, the other rest of the team. Doug had this uh, strategy of dealing with this uh, scale issue by just assuming the best. So every day he would say, I predict that we are going to get to the base of the mountains by the end of the day, and then we will tackle the whole glacier tomorrow. And then at the end of every single day, we did not reach the base of the mountains. And in fact, the mountains seemed as far away as the beginning of the day when we had started. And this infuriated me, because this, I had a completely different mindset uh, to Doug. My point of view was that. Um, my point of view is that we shouldn't assume the best, we should actually assume the worst and, and just uh, and, and be cautious about our assumptions. Um, and he told me to shut up and stop whining, basically, which is uh, a fair point because we were very, very lucky to be in this um, place. And, and we would soon find out that it's much better to look at a beautiful scene of mountains than it is to look at the blank horizon um, of nothing. There was uh, a point, uh, a low point in the tent uh, when we were just kind of silent for a while and, and uh, kind of contemplating um, the failures of, of, um, of our ability to continue for the whole day and for our planned day and continue throughout the plan. And, um, and Doug was disappointed at me because I was the only one really struggling. He could do the speed record in, in no time. If, uh, if he really wanted to, if, if it was just him or if it was two of him. Uh, and so I, I, I disappointed him and I was disappointed also in myself. Um, and he asked me to think really long and hard about uh, this expedition and if I needed to, to quit. I knew I couldn't think of the pole as, as 150 miles away. It was too daunting for me. And, and uh, instead I just would picture it a manageable distance away, so 10 steps. I can do 10 steps, right? Anyone can do 10 steps. Doesn't matter whether you have two broken legs, you can probably do 10 steps. Uh, and don't think about the 11th. And when you get to the 10th, you just do another 10. And then what's great is that nothing bad will ever last forever. And so for me, the, the concept was the worst that could happen is that I suffer for the, until the end of the day, then I can get into the tent and, and I can be relatively comfortable and just go to sleep. Uh, and then you know, maybe I have to start again tomorrow, but you, know, you can leave that to tomorrow. I don't know whether uh, you, I mean, you're, you can also uh, decide whether what I've done is completely useless, but um, I also was 15. You know, I didn't, I didn't have a higher education. Um, I was halfway through secondary school. When I was asking scientists for advice on the research program for the South Pole, there was one that told me, um, don't do it. A very distinguished scientist, been a scientist for 40 years, said, you don't, you don't have the right to do, to do something like this. You need to finish your degree first. You need to then start an, a, a postgraduate degree, you need to join somebody else's expedition, you need to learn that way, and then maybe you'll have the right to engage in, in some sort of science, but right now you'll just mess everything up for real scientists. Um, and you have to really separate the, the influences of the people that you trust have the right motivations. Um, you do need a, a grad, you need higher education for some things, uh, and, you, and you also like for, for um, perspective, for sure, uh, we need to be aware of our own limitations in terms of what we know, the experience that we have. But then when we do have a limitation somewhere, but we want to find a way to exceed it somehow in our project, we can always go to somebody else that does have that experience. Um, when it came to the research for my expedition, I know I didn't have a degree yet, um, and I was not nearly experienced enough to just say, this is what the scientific community needs. So I went out and formed a committee of scientists that were experienced 
and, and they gave me advice. And they knew what they were talking about because they were much older and much more experienced. If you can do one thing, it's to go and make an effort to learn about uh, how increased temperatures and how global warming is actually affecting people. Um, how it's not really an environmental issue, it's a, it's a societal issue. And it's something that is going to be really deeply impacting uh, many generations to come, but uh, have a huge part to play uh, throughout society in uh, terms of the economy, in terms of suffering of people in poverty, and uh, that kind of thing.